Hi there, welcome back to the ERS FEC video training series. This will be a brief tutorial on adding and editing web pages and editing your website navigation. So let's start by familiarizing ourselves with the basic components of a web page. The area with the blue background and the white links and the logo is referred to as the header, and it populates to every page on the website. The white links in the header are referred to as the navigation bar. The black area with the white links and the red social media icons is referred to as the footer, and it also populates to each web page. And the area between the header and the footer is referred to as the body of the web page. So let's edit our header and footer. We're going to do that at Admin, Website, Responsive Setup. Let's go to this drop down menu right here, and I think I want to try this one. And anytime we edit our header style, we can view the preview down here. All right, I prefer this. I like the social media icons, and I'm thinking I'd like to go ahead and add our YouTube page. So I'm going to go to General Config, System Settings. I'm going to navigate almost all the way to the bottom of the page until I find the social networking settings. So the instructions for what to enter into these fields are located here. I'm going to go ahead and add our YouTube page. And if I wanted Instagram and or Facebook not to show up on my header, I would just delete those entries. Any of these fields that are left empty will not show up on the header. All right, I'm gonna save my changes. And when we go back into the responsive website editor, we should be able to see the YouTube icon on our header. The blue behind the text and the links on the header is actually a solid blue image file. And I followed these instructions right here to upload it into the system. So if you'd like to upload a navbar background image into the system, you can follow these instructions as well. All right, now that our header is squared away, let's look at how to edit our footer. Let's go ahead and try this one. And once again, it's gonna load that down here and we can preview it. And I liked it better the other way, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it back. Yep, I prefer that, I'm gonna leave it like that. The area between the header and footer on this preview screen is known as the store, and you can have that on as many web pages as you like. And you can see that the store automatically populates all of your categories. Now, as of now, there is no background image behind the category icons, so I'd like to add a background image, and I'm gonna do that up here. So once again, we can preview it down here. And I like the look, but it is a little difficult to read those words, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a little background tint. Oh, much better. We can also change the style of these category icons right here. I think I prefer this, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave it like that. If we look underneath your web pages, we see a list of all of the pages on our website. The little icon to the left is where we place custom code. The ERS FEC system supports the use of custom code if you'd like to do special things on your website. So if you'd like to use custom HTML and or CSS on a given web page, you would do that here. Now if you would like to have custom CSS or HTML on every page, you can do that here. We'll discuss the use of custom code in more detail in our advanced web editing video. All right, so let's edit the body of our home page a bit. I'm gonna find the home page in the Your Web Pages list, and I'm gonna click on the icon with the pencil. And this opens up an editable version of the web page in a separate browser tab. In general, anytime you're in the responsive editor, anywhere you see text, you can click on it to edit it, and you can do the same with images. Now I'd like to replace this text banner with a YouTube video, so I'm gonna hover over this gear over here. I'm gonna click on Change Style, and that brings up a menu of all of the style sections that we have. A style section just means a part of a web page. So I'm gonna find one of the YouTube style sections, and then I'm gonna click and drag it into place. The little blue dots tell me where it's gonna go. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste the text from in here, and put it over here. And I'm gonna do the same with this text right here, and we can see that the system allows us to use custom code in the responsive editor itself as well. And by the way, we can also see that the text field is using what we call a merge field. Anytime you see words inside brackets in the system like that, again, it's a merge field. And it pulls information from your folder and puts it in the area where you put the merge field. So if, for example, you ever changed your company name, this would automatically update. We'll discuss merge fields in more detail in our documents video. All right, last but not least, let's get our video in there. So we're gonna go to YouTube, we're gonna find the video that we want, and we are going to click into the URL bar and highlight just the characters that come at the end of the URL. And we're gonna copy those, and we're gonna head back into the editor, click on the video, and replace the characters at the end, and we're good to go. So now that we've got that in place, we don't need this one, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. And as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking I'd rather have that YouTube video below the store, so I'm going to hover over that style section, grab the cross icon, and drag it down below the store. 
Now I'm also thinking I'd like a little bit bigger of a YouTube video there, so I'm going to click on the pencil, and that is going to show me all of the different versions of the style section. I think I'm going to go with this one. We can do that with other kinds of style sections as well, such as the store, which allows us to choose from the different icon styles, or this section, which again allows us to choose different versions of this section. Alright, so this looks good for now. I'm going to go ahead and hover over the gear to save my changes again. And we can go to the front end live website and refresh the page to see our edits. Alright, so I'm going to call that one good. And let's go ahead and create a new page. So I'm going to click back into the control panel and I'm going to go to admin website, website pages. And let's go ahead and add a new one. You always want your page path to start with a slash and have an underscore between any separate words. The only other setting in here that I need to double check is use template. And the vast majority of web pages do use a template. And this one's no exception, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that one set at yes. I'm not going to worry about the meta tags right now. There are default meta tags, so if we don't put any meta tags in here, it's not like the page won't have any. Eventually for SEO, I do want to edit those meta tags. But for now, the main thing is just to get the page created. So we're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and submit. And there it is at the bottom of our list. Let's go ahead and go into Website, Responsive Setup to make it into a responsive page. And we can see that it's grayed out because it's in classic mode. So to put it into responsive mode, we just click on this little switch. And then we can click on the pencil to edit the page as usual. Now another thing we can and should do here is to make a link and an alt tag for this image. Oftentimes when there's a standalone picture like this on a website, people think it's clickable. So it doesn't hurt to put a link in here to your store page. So we'll go ahead and put the link in here, and a relative or internal link, meaning a link to a page that's on your website, only needs the text in the URL that comes after your domain. For example, if your domain is jumpyjumps.com and you want to link to the store, you don't have to write jumpyjumps.com slash store in here. You can just put slash store. However, if you are wanting to link to a page outside of your website, you need to use what we call an absolute link. In other words, the full URL. Alt refers to the alt tag. Alt tags are important for SEO and handicap accessibility. One of the things that Google and other search engine companies look at for SEO rankings is whether the images on a page have an alt tag. Now, not every image can have an alt tag. For example, background images don't have alt tags. But a good rule of thumb is that if you're working in the responsive editor and you see a field to enter in an alt tag for an image, go ahead and put something in there. And an alt tag is just a brief verbal description of the picture. People with visual impairment use what we call screen reading software. Since they can't see the pictures on a page, their screen reading software reads the alt tag to them. So I'm going to go ahead and apply these changes. And once again, I'm going to hover over the gear to save. And now I want to put this page in the navigation of our website. So let's go ahead and close out this page now that our changes are saved. And let's go back into the back end and go to Admin, Website, Website Editor. So you can add pages to the navigation on either side of the pages that are already in here or as part of a drop-down menu. So when you see a column of pages like this, what that means is that the page at the top is serving as a placeholder. When your customers click on that, it won't actually take them to that page. It'll populate a drop-down menu of all the pages that are underneath it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the Contact Us page here. Whatever text we put into this page title field is what's going to populate to the website. And if we choose the page from this drop-down menu, it'll automatically populate the page path into the field underneath that. You can also choose categories from in here to make the page serve as a placeholder for a drop-down menu of all of your categories. So in the page title, you could say something along the lines of our attractions. Now in this particular case, we have our items listed out separately. And by the way, you can see that the page path in here is following the relative link format that we discussed just a minute ago. Now we can click here to remove this page from the navigation. That is not going to delete the page from existence. It just removes it from the navigation. And we can click here to move the pages around. And if we go back into the live website and refresh the page, we can see the edits that we made. All right, now as we've discussed before, the ERS system helps you in many ways with your SEO under the hood. There's the page path or URL using the name of the item or category. There's the fact that the system populates the description and name to the page as well. And it's the same with items. If we look at this item page here on the front end and then we look at it on the back end, we can see that the system is using the name, cost, picture, and description that we entered in here on that web page. So in this way, much of your website editing is actually done for you by the ERS system as you enter your inventory. 
but it is possible to edit item and category pages individually. So let's go back into the control panel to admin product items and click into an item, scroll about two thirds of the way down until we get to display to customer and then click on edit responsive content. And that opens up the responsive website editor specifically for this page. And the interface is the same as any other page. You just hover over the gear and pick your style sections and make your edits. All right, so now that our edits are made, let's go back into the control panel and go to admin, website, website pages. And we can see that when we use the responsive editor to edit that item page, it created a new page for us in here. So let's go ahead and click into here and let's highlight everything that comes after system underscore in this name field and copy it. Let's put a slash and then let's paste the rest of that text in here and another slash at the end. Let's make it a responsive page and let's submit. And when we go back into the website, we can click on refresh and see our changes. Now let's talk a bit about SEO. There's an old saying in SEO land, content is king. And what that really means is the text on your website and in your meta tags is the primary thing that's gonna drive your SEO results. Assuming your business is already registered on Google Maps and you've got a system with solid under the hood stuff like ERS has, the difference between mediocre rankings and really good ones is good quality content. So you wanna make sure that the web pages in your system have really relevant content that provides useful information about the subject of that web page and your business for your customers. You wanna make sure your spelling and grammar are correct. And at the same time, you want all of this to feel natural. So try to think of the words that your customers will enter into Google and other search engines to try to find a company like yours and try to use those words on your web pages. For example, if you have a trampoline park and you suspect people in your service area are going to be entering search terms like trampoline park or birthday party, trampoline park, that sort of thing, then you want to try to have those words peppered all throughout your website. At the same time, I have been to some websites where it seemed like the person was trying really, really hard to get good SEO results and it didn't feel natural. So do your best to use those different keywords and phrases that your customers will use, but keep it conversational and feeling natural. Now there's the content on your pages, but search engine companies are also looking at your meta tags. Meta tags consist of the HTML title, meta keywords, and meta description. The HTML title is the little snippet of text that shows up next to the favicon in your browser tab. HTML titles typically aren't complete sentences. It's just a few words to describe the subject of that page and your company. HTML titles should be 60 characters or fewer. Meta keywords are individual words and brief two or three word descriptions that describe what the web page and your company is all about. Google no longer looks at meta keywords, but some of the other search engine companies do. Some SEO experts will tell you meta keywords aren't worth putting any time into, and others will tell you they are worth putting a bit of time into. It's really up to you, but I do encourage you to put maybe 10 or 15 words in there, as it can't really hurt as long as those words are actually relevant to the page. And meta description is a one to three sentence brief description of what your company and that web page are about. Meta description is typically the text that you'll see under the link when you do a web search. Sometimes the search engine companies pull other text to put in there, but most often it is the meta description. Meta descriptions should be 160 characters or fewer. So once you've gotten your website looking and organized the way that you want it, I encourage you to come back in here and add robust meta tags for each of the pages in here. Remember, spreadsheet mode is a helpful tool for making lots of edits at one time like that. Now, as we discussed earlier, the system also does have default meta tags. So for any of these pages where you don't specify meta tags, the system will use those defaults. So you can look at and edit your default meta tags at admin, general config, miscellaneous settings. And they're almost all the way down at the bottom of the page. So if you do update these, make sure to click save. All right, that about does it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Our next tutorial will be on documents. Not to sound too much like a broken record, but remember anytime you're working in the system and you have questions, the help tab and the knowledge base are your friend as is the tech support department who you can reach at 505-435-9731, extension 102, or support at eventrentalsystems.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.